So this is our tutorial video on how to draw different wave diagrams for GCSE level physics. Within the video, we're going to be talking about ray diagrams and wavefront diagrams. So our first goal is to be able to identify a ray diagram and a wavefront diagram, understand the difference between the two. Then we're going to have a look at how we draw ray diagrams and wavefront diagrams for the process of reflection. And then we're going to look at how we draw ray diagrams and wavefront diagrams for the process of refraction. As always, make sure you use the pause button and rewind if something hasn't made sense. You can make summary notes as you go along and bring any questions you have to the next lesson. So here we have our two types of diagrams. We have got ray diagrams here and we have got a wavefront diagram here. So let's talk about the difference between the two. In our ray diagram, and these are the ones that we learn to draw first, we are summarising the path of waves with one single ray. We put an arrow on it to show the direction the waves are travelling. Um, and the direction of the ray is showing the direction the wave is travelling. Um, here we can see a ray diagram being reflected. And so you can see the change in direction. We never have any gaps in our ray diagram and we always have arrows and we always draw them with a straight line. Now if we have a look at our wavefront diagram, it's a little bit different, but it's showing the same thing. If you could imagine, for example, um, some water waves uh, rolling along on the sea and you can imagine you've got the crest of those waves as a long line like this. If you looked at that set of waves from above, and you looked at the lines on the crest, what you'd see is these lines here. So this is a bit like a plan view or a bird's eye view from above the waves. And the line represents, um, you could almost imagine it as the crest of those waves. Now what this means is we can see information from the wavefront diagram about the wavelength. The distance between two of these lines is lambda, the wavelength of the wave. So if these lines are closer together, we know the wavelength is shorter, and if they're further apart, we know the wavelength is longer. So these diagrams show the wavefronts and the wavelength. And what's really important to remember is that the wavefronts are always perpendicular or 90 degrees to the ray. So if we were gonna draw a ray instead of the wavefront, the ray would be at 90 degrees along here. So let's have a little look now at how we draw our diagrams for reflection. So we're going to look at ray diagrams and wavefront diagrams. Let's start with ray diagrams. So first of all, we've got a pretty standard ray diagram for the process of reflection. And you've probably all drawn this one before and find it absolutely fine. So we've got our mirror here. We've got our incident ray, our incoming ray here. That, and we've got the arrow showing which direction it's traveling. That ray touches the mirror here and then the ray reflects and goes off in this direction and the arrow shows the new direction here. You can see if you look carefully there's no gaps in this ray where it touches the mirror and you can see these rays are drawn with a ruler. Now I've got this dashed line here and this line is the normal and it is an imaginary line at 90 degrees or perpendicular to the surface, so in this case the mirror. And we can measure the angle of incidence between the ray and the normal here and mark that as I for angle of incidence. And we can measure the angle of reflection here between the ray and the normal and mark that R. And we know for reflection that the angle of incidence is equal to the angle of reflection. Now let's have a look at another type of ray diagram that we can draw for reflection. So another diagram you might be asked to draw is a ray diagram to show how an image is formed in a mirror. So you might be given this information here. Here is the mirror. Here is the object that we're going to see the image of. And here is the eye that's going to see the image. So the first thing we need to do is get a ruler and draw in our image. So you want to put the ruler so it is at perpendicular to the mirror. So it should be across like this. So put the the ruler perpendicular to the surface, so that's at 90 degrees, and then measure the distance between the object and the mirror, and then mark in the image the same distance behind the mirror. 
So here you can see the image has been marked in. This is the object in real life and this is the image that you see in the mirror. If we have our ruler perpendicular or at 90 degrees to our mirror, this distance here is equal to this distance here. And that is the first thing that you need to do. The next thing we're going to do is draw in the rays travelling from the image to the eye. So I get my ruler, I join up the image, first of all to the top of the eye, and I'm going to draw it as a dashed line behind the mirror and as a solid line between the mirror and the eye. I'm now going to draw in another ray from the image, but to the bottom of the eye here. So now you can see we've got two rays coming from the image to the eye. Next, we need to draw the rays from the object to where the rays are coming from the mirror. So I've drawn the first ray here, touching this ray. And remember, we're still following the law of reflection, so angle I is equaling angle R. So if we imagine we've got our normal in here, that's looking roughly equal. And now we'll draw the other ray. Here it is. So I've now got two rays coming from the object, reflecting in the mirror and going to the eye. And I've got these dashed rays showing where the image is formed. There's one more thing I need to put on. Can you think what it is? Yep, that's right. We need to add on the arrows. And now finally, my ray diagram showing how a, an image is formed in a mirror is complete. Now we can also draw wavefront diagrams to show reflection. So if we look at this situation here, I've got my mirror and rather than having the ray travelling towards the mirror, I've got my wavefronts. So I've got them at 90 degrees perpendicular to where my imaginary ray is that I haven't joined in. And you can see here that I'm keeping the wavelength consistent. So the distance between the wave fronts here is consistent all the way down. I then stop the rays where they're meeting the mirror. So now I'm going to draw the reflected wave fronts. So I then turn my ruler at 90 degrees and where one ray, I'm going to start this new wave front here at the tip of the wave front that stopped at the mirror and so on there. And you can see that the distance between the wave fronts here is the same as the distance between the wave fronts there. The process of reflection hasn't changed the wavelength of the wave. If you're finding it difficult to imagine that, you can always imagine this diagram up here that we did for reflection with the rays. So look, here are my rays here. And then I just draw the wave fronts in at 90 degrees at equal spacings. OK, if it's being tricky to imagine, but this is what our wavefront diagram is going to look like for reflection. Don't draw the rays in here. That's just so that you can see the relationship between the rays and the wavefronts being 90 degrees to each other. So next, we're going to talk about refraction. Let's remind ourselves that refraction is a process where a wave can change direction at the boundary between two mediums due to a change in the speed of the wave. So here I've got the boundary between two mediums and the medium is air and glass. And we're going to look at what uh, light waves might do when they meet that boundary. So let's have a go. So what we've done here is we've we've starting with our ray diagram of refraction and I've drawn the incident ray or the incoming ray here. So here's my incident ray. I've drawn it with a ruler. I've marked that arrow on to show which direction it's traveling in and it then just stops briefly at the boundary. I've also drawn in the normal where the ray touches the boundary. So I've, when I've drawn this in, I've had to measure it with a protractor to make sure it's at 90 degrees or perpendicular to the boundary because remember the normal is an imaginary line at 90 degrees to the surface. Next, we're now gonna draw our refracted ray and you can see it drawn in here. And that you can see if we look here, there has been a change in direction. So this ray doesn't carry on straight. It has been bent closer to the normal. Now, what's really important here is to understand that um, light waves are going to travel faster in air. 
spanning glass. So if we're going from fast to slow, the ray is going to be refracted towards the normal. So this angle in here, the angle of incidence, is going to be larger than this angle in here, the angle of refraction. Now it might be that we're drawing the diagram in the context of a whole glass block, like we did for our experiment in the lesson. In which case then, as well as having this boundary, you've got all of the boundaries between glass and air marked on here. We draw the refracted ray traveling across to the next boundary. And then here, the light wave is traveling from slow to fast. So if you imagine the normal in here, perpendicular to the surface, then actually, um, the ray has been refracted away from the normal again because the wave has sped up. And you'll find that this ray is um, parallel to this ray here. Now we're going to have a look at how to draw the wavefront diagram for refraction. So we start off with the same context. Here's our boundary between two mediums, air and glass. So just as we did with our previous wavefront diagrams, we've got the ray fronts at consistent spacings to show the wavelength, and they are perpendicular to the ray that would be coming in here. We stop them at the boundary, just like we did with the mirror. Um, but this change in speed of the waves is gonna result in a change of wavelength. So let's see how we can represent that on the wavefront diagram. So what we then do, we remember we said when we were talking over here that the waves are gonna go faster in air than in glass. If you imagine the tip of this wave here, if it then slows down, it's going to be behind where the wave front would be otherwise. So this part of the wave front has been slowed down, so it's gone backwards a bit. You can see the same thing here. This part of the wave here has slowed down and gone backwards, and that then means that our wavelength has got smaller. So once the wave front is all in the new medium, we then just draw that as a straight line in line with these ones here. You can see the wavelength has got smaller, which is what happens in refraction because the speed has changed. And now if we imagine a ray here, it's a different direction. And it has changed direction because the speed of the waves has changed. It's important to show this wavelength change. So here we've got where it's traveling faster, we've got a larger wavelength. Where it's traveling slower, we've got a smaller wavelength. So that's how we draw our wave diagrams. Um, at the beginning of the video, we said we wanted to I'd be able to identify a ray diagram and a wave front diagram. We wanted to be able to draw ray diagrams and wave front diagrams for reflection, which we've done. And we wanted to be able to draw ray diagrams and wave front diagrams for refraction. Now, um, you've got a jam board to help you with these diagrams. So you can now go and practice drawing these diagrams yourself on the jam board that I've given you. If you have any questions, please just bring them to the next lesson. And it might be that you might find it helpful to now watch the video while practicing drawing the diagrams now that you've been through it once. Um, I will see you in the next lesson.